All right, let's get this puppy open. Oh, this is my current solar inverter. It's a whooping 500, or it might even be 250VA, a Fiskars UPS unit that I've just uh, hacked an Anderson connect connector to that's just a frame. And, uh, well, it, it's not a very efficient thing, and uh, while it has been working just fine for some time, uh, it's run into a bit of an issue. Uh, we're probing the output of it very safely by just shoving a couple of banana jacks into the uh, power socket and I'm going to turn it on and maybe you'll be able to spot what the issue might be as you might be able to see we've got a rather major distortion on the 50Hz 8-bit there, and that's causing the very loud humming of the transformer. And let's see what happens when I heat this capacitor right there. Hmm. I think my 20 year old inverter might be due for a bit of a capacitor replacement procedure because that to me looks like a bad cap and just as I was putting on my smug correct diagnosis face uh, it seems that we've been foiled the cap in question is a 10 microfarad one and if we probe it with the unavailable to the public ESR meter that you should all stop asking me about and we see that it's in perfectly good health. This is exactly what you would expect a working 10 microfarad electrolytic to measure. So, we've obviously got something else in the vicinity of a cap to look for. Now, we do have some interesting items around here. There should be the cap right here. We have one of these little capacitors there, these are notorious for going bad and we've also got a few film or tantalums sitting around it. We also do have this IC which might have gotten a bit of heat but I don't think we actually heated it up uh, for long enough to affect that. But I'm going to have to measure around and I'm probably going to desolder that and give that a measure. Since uh, I believe these are reefer brand usually and they are tend to get cracked with age. I'm not sure if we can see it of this one. Probably can't. But it's a likely culprit. I've replaced many of these over the years. And there's a close up of the suspect cap. As you can see, it's got a whole heap of tunnel cracks in the plastic. And that's usually what kills these. Well, I'll be damned. The inverters put together and running right now, and as you can hear it's running just fine. But I think the issue might be that I see after all, because what what happens when I put some alcohol on it and blue on it in order to cool the IC down by evaporation. This makes a huge difference, whereas cooling and heating the actual capacitor that I suspected does nothing at all, nor does cooling any of the diodes and stuff around it. And if we put some alcohol right there you can see how it evaporates right in the middle at first, so that sheep seems to be running a bit hot right there for die. Hmm. I believe the 9449 is a bit is uh, an integrated uh, switch mode controller which might not be too difficult to get my hands on. So I think I'm just going to have to try and replace that IC. Because even if there's some... I mean you can't rule out some uh, the surrounding component causing the malfunction but yeah, that, this is just such an easy lead to follow, even if, if even if it might be a red herring. 
<laughs> but I think I'm going to go for it. I might even have some of these ICs in stock. Okay, so I was incorrect about the number, but I see it's actually an IR2110, uh, which is uh, just a MOSFET driver, pretty box standard high voltage driver. And uh, before we go for retard and <laughs> start swapping parts at random, I figured we'd at least uh, measure the inputs of this IC since they are just logic level inputs, uh, reference to a pin on the IC. And if the inputs are fine and the outputs are wonky, well, then I would be pretty certain that uh, this IC is to blame since the reference schematic that I found has about uh, two external components and one of them was a filter capacitor over the uh, power rail, so there really isn't much uh, that could go wrong around this device, uh, save for the actual transistors uh, that uh, it's driving. And uh, those uh, do seem to work just fine, although of course they could be suffering some slow failure mode where they get excessive gate capacitance or something like that, get a bit leaky. Anyway, I've got the scope hooked up to the ground pin on the IC, so let's pair it up and see if we can manage to measure anything. Yeah, this is obviously the, the modulation that's uh, driving the transformer because it seems to be modulating at a relatively low frequency. You can basically pick it up if we do it like that. So this is going to be modulating at 50 hertz. And uh, I don't know, it does look a bit ugly to be frank. Just hmm. because this rise time isn't very fast at all. Quite chunky there. Oh, we'll go for a little more of the trigger hold if we can actually capture it for capture it at the same. Spot and modulation every time, and if we slightly step it out, we can see how it's modulating, beating against our trigger hold off. This looks a bit weird, but that could be due to the fact that it's going to be turning the other half on as well, and it's going not probably not doing that time perfectly. Well, all that weirdness was obviously due to me doing something very wrong because I just replaced my probe and now we've got a very nice signal level of 16 volts, which is well within the specification of this chip. And this time it looks absolutely perfect. There's nothing wrong with this input signal at all. And I just checked the. low side driver as well and that one looked perfect too. So yeah that's nothing wrong with this input whatsoever. Although we should induce the error. So let's see what happens when we cool the chip down. Seems to be happening as a little bugger all on the input. Okay, so having determined that the input side is fine, let's have a quick squeeze at the output, hoping we don't have too much volts, shall we? It shouldn't be that case since it's driving 100 volt FETs. There we go, just as much voltage of air. That doesn't look in a winner as nice. Slightly low rise time, but I don't know. Since it's driving some heavy duty transistors, I'm, I'd be happy with this. More than happy with this. It seems the time is changing. Alright, so by making vast improvements in the art of moisture problem troubleshooting tools by first devising a long tube through which I can blow my breath made up of two cotton buds that I cut the tips off and taped together 
and finally the ultimate, a Q-tip that I've cut one end of, which I can then blow through in order to moisten the cotton tip. And by probing this end with my multimeter, uh, until I get some kind of uh, reaction, I have an idea about uh, what I'm doing. And this thing should right now have an impedance of uh, about 50 mega ohms. And even if I can probably kill it by just poking it hard enough of these. No, not, not killing it, but it's getting there. This general area seems to be just incredibly sensitive to any kind of creepage. I must as well just <gasps> breathe on it. <laughs> this is literally a device that's so sensitive that you can't even breathe on it. So now the question is what to do about it. And I'm considering just potting that area really. Although that would probably just be masking the issue since it hasn't always done this. Alright, so I did a slight bit of reverse engineering on this thing and uh, as you can see I've decided to go the easy route and just uh, pot the moisture sensitive area. This is the underside of the PCB obviously. And it seems this part of the circuit is uh, related to the feedback circuit because uh, as you can see, here are the two output uh, planes of the inverter, which goes straight out off to the transformer. And uh, the this uh, these little traces here go through this resistor and this resistor, and then they squiggle their way over there, right underneath the potting. And uh, indeed, the trace coming off of these two resistors are the ones that are incredibly sensitive. In particular, when you touch them to one of the components beside which um, I don't know what they do. So, some things cause this thing to be incredibly sensitive, but uh, I haven't been able to find any grossly broken components around there. And uh, since I am using this device in a moist basement, literally sitting <laughs> on top of a puddle of water. Uh, I'm figuring that maybe it's just uh, being used right at the edge of its design goal, but they didn't really consider that it might be used in such high humidity. And I mean, it works fine as long as I'm not breathing on it or having it in the room where it's very moist. So I'm hoping that the solution is going to last for some time, or at least until such time that there will actually be some obvious fault with the unit. So I've just got to flip the board back down, as you can see the service position position is very simple on this, you just disconnect the fan and the uh, front panel there and you can flip the board up, you just undo <laughs> three little plasticky things and one entire screw so, fingers crossed, gotta push this thing somewhat back together alright, fingers crossed, let's turn this thing on Solid got a bit of a tendency, but man, is that better? Mm, isn't perfectly happy, it definitely isn't. Oh, it definitely isn't happy. Oh, more research. And there we go, I just had to pot a bit more. It seems we've got another couple of resistors there which were a bit sensitive, but I've now gotten it to a stage where you can get it to grunt and misbehave if you breathe very heavily on this IC down here, which is uh, an OM348, that should be an op amp, I believe. But it basically needs to be dripping wet in order for there to be any issue. So I think I'm going to call this a fix and put it back in service and enjoy a continuous use of my 70 something percent efficient solar inverter. 
pissing away my energy. Alright, I'll have everything put back together and the 20 year old ball bearing fan replaced. Let's see if she'll fire up. Indeed, and we're to hint of that horrible distortion. Well, excellent. I'm quite comfortable calling that a fix for now. Thank you for watching. Cheerio. Gulla pecka! I design the outer grill, you design the inner grill. That way we are really efficient and we make efficient vent holes on side of unit.